He left early this morning. We thought he was over at your place. Well, he was supposed to come over. We were going into town to see Mr. Weems about selling my place. I uh, don't blame Adam. He's been a little absent-minded lately. Absent-minded? It's been more than that. He came over for supper last night and he fell asleep while I was washing the dishes. It's happened the last three times he's been over. You're working him too hard. Ha! That'll be the day. Matter of fact, we've been doing his chores lately. Well, whatever it is, I hope he gets over it soon. I don't know what I'll do about the appointment with Mr. Weems. Will? Why don't you go with Laura? We'll get the chores done. Fine. I'm sure there'll be a lot of questions I won't know the answers to. Well, I don't know how much help I'll be, but I'll sure try. Hey, would you take care of my horse, please? Certainly. I'll tell Adam you're in town. Yeah, and we'll also give him some very serious advice about falling asleep in the presence of a good-looking gal, too. <laughs> Come on. I don't know what's gotten in Adam lately. Getting up early, staying out late, never telling anybody where he's going. Well, if you don't want to tell us, it ain't none of our business. Yeah. You know what I think I'm going to do? I think I'm going to get up early one of these mornings and just follow him. Ha. Anytime you get up earlier than is necessary, that's going to be a miracle. And in second place, you ain't going to spy on your brother, and you know it. Eh, just the same. I don't think it's fair to Laura. I really don't, because you know, people who are engaged are, are supposed to be miserable when they're not together all the time. That's you, little brother. You ain't Adam. Oh, horse is right, Joe. You have no business criticizing anything you don't know anything about. Besides, your older brother knows what he's doing. Anything you say, Pa. How's it going? Great. How did I get the delivery on those special beams? You're working a little short-handed. You sure you couldn't use more men? I'm sure, Pa. I want to take as much care of this place as you did with the Ponderosa. And I hope this house lasts as long and is just as happy. Well, <laughs> I know how you feel, although I, I didn't have any problem keeping my house a secret. Problem? What do you mean? Well, it's always a problem keeping things secret from a woman. There's no protection against a woman's curiosity. Well, I just, uh... Want to present the house complete, finished, on our wedding day as a surprise. Does that bother you? Well, now, do you think Laura would rather have you keep it a secret or have you spend a little more time with her now? Why, has she been complaining? No, no not really. Well, there's nothing to worry about. As soon as I get delivery on our cedar panels, I'll uh, hire some more men for the job and we'll get it done faster. Why don't you tell her about the house? Well, I've gone this far. I might as well finish it. Even at the risk of maybe neglecting Laura too much? Ah, oh, stop worrying, Pa. I love Laura, she loves me. I just want to present the house on the wedding day as a gift. It's as simple as that. You gonna be buying the house before you go over to Laura's? Well, it depends on how much I get done here. I may go directly over there if I'm late.
I certainly appreciate all your help, Will. Well, I don't know how helpful I was, but uh, whatever it was, you're certainly welcome. You can take the buggy on to the Ponderosa. Adam can bring it back tonight when he comes for supper. You know, since Adam's been eating over here so regularly, uh, Hop Singh's nose is out of joint. You must be as good a cook as he says you are. Well, Will, you know you're welcome to come over any time to supper and judge for yourself. Well, I better wait till after you're married. I think that right now, three would be a crowd. Mommy! Hi, Mommy. Hi, Will. Hi, Peg. Where's Adam, Mommy? Well, he's busy. What did you want? I wanted to ask him something about my pony, Traveler. Can I help? No, thanks. I'll wait for Adam. She's going to miss this place. Oh, she'll love the Ponderosa once you settle there. I'm sure she will. You have any doubts? Oh, I, I know the Ponderosa's lovely, and I adore uh, Ben and the boys, but... <sighs> As a group, they're a little overwhelming, huh? But do you realize, counting Hop Singh, there are six men in that house? Well, you call that bad? Well, you two will be as spoiled as princesses. Well, I wouldn't mind being a princess, but I would like to be a housewife in a place of my own. Adam, know how you feel? Yes. At least I have asked him to think about staying on here after we're married. But he won't hear of it. Adam is very strong in his opinions. But I really shouldn't be talking to you about this. I understand how you feel. We'd better keep it a secret. They'd be very hurt if they knew. All right. And we'll keep it a secret. Thank you, Will, for everything. Anytime. Pretty tough job for a little girl, Peg. Oh, Adam, I know I can do it. I just know I can. I'm going to give my pony a surprise on its birthday. It'll be a year next month since you gave him to me. Oh, my goodness, has it been that long? Well, you're a better rememberer than I am. I'm a pretty good rememberer, too. And it's your bedtime, young lady. Oh, Mommy. And no arguments. All right, now look, Peggy. I'm going to braid these three strands for about six more inches, and I ought to keep you busy until I tell you about the next step. Now, you do what your mama says. Yes, Adam. Good night, Adam. Good night, Mommy. She certainly minds you better than she does me. Well, it says it should be. Uh, see, it is how I'm going to be her father. <clears throat> and when is that going to be? Oh, well, uh, as soon as we're married, of course. Oh, Adam, don't tease me. You know perfectly well what I mean. When are we going to set the date for the wedding? Well, we've decided that uh, sometime this summer. I mean specifically. We have to pick a definite date. Well, there are millions of things to be done. This ranch has to be sold, a wedding dress has to be made, a church arrangements. Right. Goodness, you are eager, aren't you? Isn't that being a bit forward? Adam, you're impossible. <laughs> sweetheart. We'll pick a definite date real soon. I promise you. Well, there is one date that's definite, and that's the party that your father's going to give for us. That's right. Um, let's see, now when is that? You know perfectly well it's two weeks from next Saturday, and don't forget it. I won't. I'll be back in time. Back? Yeah. From where? Oh, I forgot to tell you, I have to go out of town on the 10th, but uh, it's, the party's not till the 14th, so there's plenty of time to get back. Well, you better be back. I got material for a new dress, and with the pattern I picked out, it's going to take me about two weeks to finish it. It's going to be beautiful. It's lavender organdy, and, and I'm going to make a sash. Doesn't that sound wonderful, Adam? Adam. Well, 
I'll go in and get my ticket. And I'll go in and get the mail. Well, I could go and look at the new dresses in Miss Irene's, but I won't. I'll be strong and just sit here and wait for you two. <laughs> You're the only passenger leaving. The stage is ready to leave now. Okay, thank you, Robert. Well, the clerk says I'm the only passenger leaving, and the stage is ready, so say goodbye to Will for me and thank him for driving you back home. I will. And don't forget about the party on Saturday. Don't worry, I'll be back. Take care of yourself and Peggy. Bye. Bye. Hey, mind if I ride with you? Keep you company? was ready, so Adam had to go. He said to say goodbye and thank you for driving me. Oh, I'm sorry I missed saying goodbye. I'd have been back sooner, but I stopped to read a letter. Good news? I don't know. Not bad news, I hope. No, but uh, might help me make a decision that I've been putting off. Well, what do you mean? Well, this letter is from a friend of mine. I met him when I was traveling around. He's got an import business in San Francisco. He wants me to travel around the world for him and make contact with these firms he does business with. Well, that sounds perfect for you. You like to travel. Yeah, it's real tempting. At least it uh, gives me a clear-cut choice. You see, before it was uh, just a question of staying on the Ponderosa or picking up and aimlessly wandering off. You sound like you've already made up your mind. Well, there are a few things I have to solve yet. Like what? Well, like telling Ben and the boys in such a way that they don't, uh, they don't think I'm ungrateful. I'm sure they'll understand. Maybe. What about you, Laura? Don't you have the same problem? About staying on the Ponderosa? No. Whatever apprehension I have about living on the Ponderosa, I'll live wherever my husband wants me to live. Oh, that Adam. He's a lucky man. find you out here. I suddenly decided I needed some fresh air. Yeah, it's kind of warm in there. Oh, sure lovely out here, isn't it? I'm sorry about Adam. It wasn't Adam's fault the road washed out. His wire said how sorry he was. Well, I still feel he should have left a little earlier. It wasn't Adam's fault. He couldn't help it. Lauren? You're going to make a very understanding wife. Would you do me a favor, Mr. Cartwright? Of course. Well, I have a headache, and I really should pick Peggy up at Mrs. Robbins. Would you mind if I went home now? Oh, of course not. I'll have one of the boys drive you home. As a matter of fact, I'll have them bring out your wrap, and I'll say good night to the folks for you. A headache can be a pretty miserable thing. You wait right here. You're very kind, Mr. Cartwright. Thank you. For my future daughter-in-law, anything. I understand you have a headache. Boys and I just drew lots to see who'd take you home. And wouldn't you know I lost? I should always be so lucky. Well, I don't know how lucky it is. I feel it's an imposition. You've had to take me so many places lately. It's always my pleasure. Came home 
the farm girl and they lived happily ever after. Oh, Mommy, Mrs. Robbins tells such beautiful stories. Indeed she must. I'd have thought you'd have been asleep long before now. No, because I was making up a story of my own. You want to hear it? Oh, not tonight, young lady. You should have been asleep hours before this. Now, you run on up to bed. I don't think I can go to sleep unless I get to finish my story. Well, you try. I'll tell it to my doll. She loves stories. Good night, Mommy. Good night, Uncle Will. Good night, Peggy. Well, I better go, too. Give you a chance to get some rest. Oh, I feel much better after the drive. Why don't you sit down and have some coffee? I just have to put it on the stove to heat it. You sure you're all right? I feel fine. All right. Besides, I've been wanting to ask you about that job in San Francisco. Uh, what did you decide? Well, that's a problem. A problem? Well, I know all about problems. Now, you take tonight. Getting a headache and acting like a fluttery female just because I was disappointed. Well, that's understandable. It was your engagement party, wasn't it? That should be important to any woman. No, the important thing is to see things in their proper perspective, not to behave like an emotional child. But here I go chattering on when you said you had a problem. Well, what is it? Nothing. Just forget I mentioned it. Well, we know each other better than that. Besides, I'm always confessing my worries to you. I've got to go now. Wait, you haven't even had your coffee yet. That's all right. Well, what's wrong? Nothing is wrong. Well, something's bothering you. Tell me what it is, please. Maybe I can help you this time. Laura, you can't help me this time. Try me, please. That's the problem. Stranger, where's your mother? I'll go call her. Mommy! Mommy! What is it, Peggy? Oh, hello, Adam. Hi, I threw my hat in the head to see if I was welcome, and uh, Peggy gave it back to me. Do you approve? Of course. Welcome home. Oh, uh, <clears throat> a little peace offering. What'd you get me, Adam? Well, now you just go look in my saddlebag, Miss Greedy. Adam, you spoil her. I just gave her a bridle. The rate she's braiding hers, this pony will be too old to use it. Go ahead and open yours. I hope it fits. It, uh, it's better than anything I could find in Virginia City. It's very nice. I'm sorry about the party. Um, it's all right, I understand. You didn't have to buy the ring in apology. It's not an apology. It's not just a gift, it's a, it's a wedding ring. I think it's time we set the date. Why now? You were... Well, you, you've been saying for weeks that... Well, I know what I've been saying for weeks, but... Well, now we can set the date. Well, I'll think about it. Think about it? Why, it's all you've been talking about. It wasn't important to you. Well, now it isn't important to me. What's wrong, Laura? 
Adam, I've seen practically nothing of you for weeks. You're gone from morning till night. You've left all the wedding arrangements to me. And, and when I do see you, you fall asleep on the couch. And at our engagement party, you weren't even there. Laura, I don't blame you for being angry, but... Well, things are going to be different now, I promise you. Adam, maybe... Maybe what? Maybe we shouldn't set the date now. Maybe we should think some more before we get married. Well, I don't understand. You've been upset for the past few weeks because we couldn't set a date, and now that we can set a date, you're even more upset. Well, maybe that's the problem, that I am still upset. Well, I think it's just a case of nerves. What about you, Adam? Are you nervous? No, but uh, as soon as we set the date, I will be. Give me some time. All right. Take all the time you need. Uh, as a matter of fact, I could use some time myself. You? Yeah, well, you said yourself there's a million things to take care of. Things keep popping up every day. Then we agree? Yeah, you just let me know when you're ready and we'll announce the date. All right, Adam. Then I'll see you tonight. Well, I have a headache. Could we make it tomorrow? Sure, I'll pick you up for church. You'll get over those nerves. It's gonna be tough enough living with me every day. in church. This morning I thought it was more important to talk to you. Well, uh, how'd you know I was here? Poss told me. Ah. Uh, what else did he tell you? That you'd come into town to sell your horse to Mr. Coombs in there. That's right. I decided to take that job in San Francisco. I know. Get in and I'll drive you back to the ranch. Poss is picking me up later. I told him I'd pick you up. Laura. Get in, Will, please. down for a minute. I'd like to talk. All right. Now, why did you suddenly make up your mind to go to San Francisco? It wasn't sudden. I've been thinking about it a long time. I told you that. And last night you kissed me. Yes. Are you sorry you did? No, I'm not sorry. But I shouldn't have. Why shouldn't you? What do you want from me? Do you, do you want some kind of a confession? All right. I love you. Kiss me. So now we both face the truth. Well, I know how I felt, but. Me too. If we hadn't both been so conscious of Adam, we would have realized what was happening weeks ago. That kiss last night shocked me into facing it. Oh, I love you. 
I love you too, Will. Now there's Adam. Well, what happened to us happened almost without our knowing it. It was just there. We didn't deliberately set out to make it happen. But now that it has, the best thing for all our sakes is to be honest about it. Make him understand. And he will. Well, there's been a hesitancy about our coming wedding from both Adam and me. His, his reluctance to set a wedding date. His constant absences. Maybe, maybe these have been indications of doubt he hasn't faced. Well, I don't know anything about that. All I know is that I'm going to have to tell him about us. We have to tell him. All right. Let's tell him today. Now. I, I don't know where he is. When he came by to pick me up for church this morning, I said I still had a headache. But he said he still had some things to do. I suppose he's on another one of his mystery trips. I think I know where he is. Come on. I saw Adam going up this canyon. I think it's this one. Well, listen. Sounds like somebody hammering. Come on. Try to move him. Maybe you're right. It might hurt him even more. You, you better go for a doctor. I heard you coming. You startled me. I, I guess I moved too fast. Lie still. Will has gone for help. Adam, we weren't spying on you. Of course not. I was building your house. I waste so much getting the best. I... Surprise for you. On wedding. What does the doctor say? Says there's serious damage to his back muscles and nerve system. Then? The doctor didn't know. But I do know. He'll recover. And he'll walk. He's going to need constant looking after. You'll have to make room for Peggy and me. We, we'll have room. Will? Well, I'm going to need your help, too. I know you were planning to 
leave for San Francisco. But we're going to be a bit short-handed. San Francisco can wait. Thank you, Will. Sweetheart, what are you doing here all alone? I got nobody to play with. I know it's lonesome for you. Why don't you go out for a ride on your pony? I can't. Uncle Haas says he has a fever in his leg and he has to stay in his stall for a few days. It's like Uncle Adam, isn't it? I mean, he can't do anything. In a way. But Adam has lots to do. His exercises and reading and talking to visitors. When is he going to come downstairs? When the doctor says he can. Why don't you go up and talk to him? His father's exercising his legs now, but I know he'd like to see you. All right, Mommy. Hi, Uncle Will. Hello, Peggy. I was looking for Ben. He's upstairs talking to Adam. Run along, Peggy. Well, it wasn't anything important. I'll see him later. Well... There. Well, Adam ought to be able to manipulate that wheelchair up and down that slick as a whistle. Of course, he might have to have some help getting up. Yeah, but you know he'll be able to get around outside just as well as he does inside with those wide wheels we put on. Yeah, there. let's go tell him we finished. <laughs> the boy certainly did a fine job on that chair. Yeah, they sure did. Well, she moves around as smooth as a greased buggy. <laughs> tell him we got that rail pole ready. You want to take a try at it? I'm ready. Adam, this chair is good, but not as good as those exercises. Don't let it become a substitute. Oh, don't you worry about that, Doctor. Laura and I won't let him do that. No, Doctor, he's a very good patient. You mean obedient. You're training him as a husband under that excuse. Come on, <laughs> let's try the ramp, and if it dumps you, it's horse's fault. <laughs> I must get back to town. I've got other patients, too, you know. Doctor, how soon do you think it'll be before he'll be able to walk? Well, he's making good progress, and uh, with the continuance of the exercises, I think he's got a very good chance, but it's still more than a matter of muscles. A lot will depend on his, uh, well, his mental determination. Well, I think he has plenty of inspiration for that right here. He's a lucky man. Yes, he is. I'll go with you. Come on, we're gonna play a little ball. I liked you, but I've got to see your father. Come on, Mommy. Mommy, let's go. Oh, well, come on in. Sit down, sit down. You got a minute? I'd like to talk to you. I sure have. Huh. Shoot. Well, the roundup's over now, and uh, things ought to ease off, so I think I better get ready to go. Hmm. Well, I can't say I haven't been expecting this. Well, I can't tell you how. 
how grateful I am for you staying on and helping. I just don't know how we'd have gotten along without you. Sure wish you didn't have your heart set on going, though. Well, Ben, I appreciate the opportunity you've offered me here, but uh, you know how it goes with me. Yeah. So I'll be making plans to leave in a few days. Will, just remember that well, this is your home, and we're your family. Whenever you need us. I won't forget. Here you go, Laura. Look out there. <laughs> oh, no. Sure is wonderful the way Adam improves every day. It sure is. Tell me you're planning to leave. Yes. Why, Will? It'll be better for both of us if I go. It's impossible for me to stay here like this. I know, but it can't be for much longer. He's getting better every day. Laura, he can't walk. It may be years before he can, if ever. No. No, Will, that's not true. Wishing won't change anything. We can't think of being together as long as he's like that. That's why, darling, I have to go. No. No, he'll get well, and then we can tell him. We can't live our lives out in that hope. What are we supposed to do in the meantime? Torture ourselves? Love you. I'm sorry. Don't be, I understand. We were coming to tell you before you had your accident. Adam, there was never anything behind your back. I know. Neither one of you could. I told you I understood. I'll be packed and gone by tonight. But you can't do that, Will. You gotta take Laura with you. No, this doesn't change anything. Will, listen to me. Weeks ago, my father tried to point out to me that I wasn't so much in love with Laura as I was the idea of being married, of having a home. But I wouldn't listen to him. I was too intrigued with building that house. But these past few weeks of lying in bed in this wheelchair given me a chance to realize that my father was right. Adam. Now, let me finish. I suppose I haven't told Laura the truth because I was afraid of hurting her. So now you're making a sacrifice so I can have her. No. What I told you just now was the truth. Look, I admire what you're trying to do, but it just won't work. Well, I swear I'm telling you the truth. I hope that someday Laura does marry you. She'll be a lucky girl. Father 
be out in a few minutes to start your exercises. Laura, I'd like to talk to you a minute. All right. What about? About you and Will. What do you mean? I mean that I know that you and Will are in love. How could you? Doesn't matter. The important thing is that I know. It's all right, Laura. Go to her. I can't. Sure you can. You love him? Marry him. But what about you? I'm all right. I love you, Laura, and I'll always love you. But not the way Will loves you, and not the way you love Will. Marry him. Live on your ranch. There's no need for Will to run away to San Francisco now. Adam, why couldn't we have talked like this before... Before my accident? You know, Laura, I think I've known all along that it would never really work out with us in marriage. Please believe me. I believe you. But Will won't. He'd always feel guilty. Don't let him. Make him believe. I can't. I know. It's too late, Ada. What's Laura upset about? What are you talking about? About getting married. I thought you decided to postpone the wedding until you'd completely recovered. I weren't talking about me. I'm talking about Will and Laura. They're in love. I'm sorry. You remember you were trying to tell me that maybe it wasn't Laura I was in love with so much as it was the idea of building my own Ponderosa? Well. You were right. These last few weeks, I've... I've finally realized it. Well, you'd better tell him. I tried. But Will wouldn't believe me. He thinks I'm making some noble sacrifice. And Laura feels the same way. But they can't have a marriage as long as... I'm in this chair. I'm all packed. I'll spend the night in town so I can catch the early morning stage. I'll tell Laura that you're leaving. Laura? Yes? Will is leaving. Do you mind if I uh, borrow the buckboard? No, just leave it at the livery stable. We'll have it picked up. So soon? When you finally decide, you might as well go. Peggy's going to be very disappointed she didn't get back in time to say goodbye. Say goodbye for me. I'll send her something from San Francisco. Adam? Keep up those exercises. Ben? Goodbye, Ben. Thanks for everything. You remember what I said? About this being your home? I won't forget. Goodbye, Laura. I will.
Adam. I'm all right. Now you go to him. See, I don't need you. He doesn't have an excuse now for not marrying you, has he? Oh, Adam, thank you. Thank you. Well? Let's go inside and give him a little privacy.